Well, on a viewer request, a gentleman wanted to know how I did cutting etches. So I thought, well, since I'm cutting this plate up, why not show? So what I do is I take the test welds that I ran, chuck it up in a vise, and then I take a uh, cordless sawzall with a uh, carbide tooth blade. These things are pretty awesome, cuts through quarter inch, no problem. I do have a dry cut saw, but the blade is shot on it, and that $80, $90, $100 for a blade, like it's just not worth it to cut these test coupons up. You know, if I had to do a bunch of roll cage tubing or something, sure, but not on this. It's just not cost effective. So I cut it in half. Now, sometimes I will take both pieces and do a cut and etch on both. In the case of this, I think we'll get enough information out of one. Um, in the case of this, I guess we'll stick with the bigger piece. So now I'm going to chuck it up in the vise. And I'm going to take an angle grinder with a flap disc and try and flatten this out. The key is you don't want to leave big, huge scratches unnecessarily. So my first, I do a three-step process. I start out with a 60 grit flap disc. You could do a 40, I guess, but I start with a 60. All right, so I do a 60 or a 40 grit first to get it flat, go back with an 80, and then I go at it with a green scrubby on a die grinder. You don't want to spin this too fast. So let me reposition the camera and start cleaning this. You can see that's pretty clean as it is. Now I'm just going to do it by hand without it in the vise. And I'm just going to buff this to where it looks shinier. That's it. And I use the light in my shop to kind of give me a gauge. All right. See how that's much shinier polished? I'll do a little bit more, but I'm going to go all the way down just like that. And again, I'm using the light from overhead to get an idea of how polished it is. I'm not running this thing wide open. You don't want to do that. So that's about as good as it's going to get for what I have here. You can see enough of a polish. One of the benefits with 6010 is it etches really well in this particular steel. With 7018, it can be very difficult to get a solid etch to differentiate weld metal from base metal, but 6010 doesn't seem to have those issues. So now I'm going to get set up and I'll show you how I etch it. All right, so I'm going to take a little bit of acetone and just wipe this down just to kind of clean the surface a little bit better. That should be enough. I use navel jelly. I've had all sorts of other chemicals around the shop that work far better than navel jelly. I'm pretty much out of them. And honestly, this stuff is so readily available and works pretty good, honestly. Just pick yourself up some of this. I'll take a little painter's brush. Definitely don't give this back to your girlfriend after you're done with it. <laughs> and I'll take this and I will wipe that nice clean steel with it. it smells like rotten eggs and I probably wouldn't be breathing the fumes on this nasty stuff if I were you. This stuff is marketed as a rust dissolver. I would imagine if it eats steel, it probably would eat rust, but not smelling too good. Now, I did not come up with this process. I learned this a long, long time ago from Jody on welding tips and tricks. 
obviously most of you guys have heard of him or definitely watch his videos and I'll tell you he's given a lot of tips over the years I mean he's damn near given people free college educations and welding awesome dude thankful for what he's done I mean I've learned a lot from him in the past and I'm sure a lot of you have and if you haven't go and check out his videos all right so let me tip this it's a little hard I'm watching this through the camera you want to watch it it's going to be a little slower simply because it's not hot if you get this stuff hot it tends to etch better and I don't have the best lighting over here either what will happen is all of a sudden it's just going to darken up and you can kind of see it already So you can start seeing them weld nuggets there. See, starting to come into focus. I'm going to take it away from the camera just so that I can see it a little bit better. Don't worry, I'll be back. It's kind of a fine line. If you left, leave it on there too long, everything will gray out and you won't see the weld. If you leave it on it too short, you won't see anything. So. I kind of need to see what's going on here. Yeah, it's starting. Whoa. Here, let's see if I can get you to see how you can start seeing that pretty good now. You grab some paper towels. All right, I can see it clearly, but I know that the camera will not see it. So I'm going to do a little bit more on here. If you can't get it to etch decent enough, you can always take the green scrubby and buff it again, and that will help. So I just put more of it on there. We'll just let it sit, and I'll come back. Once I know I can visually see it really well, I'm going to wipe it off and then show the camera. All righty. Here, i got to hide some of this, but you can see how distinguished that is now. I'll be able to take a camera photo of this, and we'll look at it. But to see the results of this, you're going to have to watch my other video, so titled 6010 Manipulation and Penetration. Giggity. So go watch that video if you want to see the actual results. But it took about, I don't know, four or five minutes to do this. You now know how to etch, cut and etch your welds. So my recommendation is do this so you can see where you're at. You might be surprised. Especially you short circuit MIG guys out there, you go weld quarter inch thick like this without cleaning a mill scale and you'll probably be shocked doing a cut and etch at how little penetration you probably have. So there you have it. Appreciate you sticking around for the whole video. Till next time.